Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to VU Sports Wired. I'm Jackson Martin. Alongside me is Peter Nygaard. Unfortunately, a lot to talk about in the world of Vanderbilt sports this weekend. Uh, so let's get to the rundown. First, we're going to talk about your Commodores losing to Wisconsin in the third round of the NCAA tournament. Uh, we're going to talk about what happened in that game, what went wrong for the Commodores. Now, something that definitely went wrong was the officiating in the game. So we're going to break down some of the mistakes that that referee crew that Vanderbilt is very familiar with uh, happened in that game. After that, we don't want to forget, your Commodores did win a game in the NCAA tournament, so we're going to talk about their matchup with Harvard. Uh, and then we're going to look at what this outgoing class of seniors and John Jenkins, who's likely gone, what is their legacy at Vanderbilt, and what are we going to ultimately remember about this team? But looking forward, this is a team that's going to be led by a core of Rod Odom, Dejon Parker, and Kedron Johnson. How far can they take us next year and into the future? Uh, on to something perhaps a little bit more positive. Spring football practice has started, so we're going to break down some of the things that have been going on uh, over on the practice turf field over there uh, on Natchez Trace. And then after that, we're going to take a walk around the bubble. So let's get to it. Starting off, your Commodores losing to Wisconsin 60-57. to uh, Heartbreaker at the end there. Commodores uh, had a shot to win it at the end, but ultimately could not pull through uh, and are eliminated from the NCAA tournament prior to the Sweet 16 for, for the fourth time since 2007. Peter, what were the takeaways from this game for the team? Well, this is actually rare for Kevin Stallings' Vanderbilt team to play the seed on either end. Uh, in the past, we've seen... In Vanderbilt fact, he's never done it before. Really? Never played exactly two seed. And what we've seen in the past is either Vanderbilt flames out in the first round or goes to the Sweet 16. So it's kind of weird to have a takeaway in this case where... You beat a Harvard, which everyone wasn't picking us to lose as usual, like they did with Richmond and Murray State. A lot of the pundits actually thought that Vanderbilt would win this game, and they did. Uh, they came out pretty strong and pulled away at the end of the first half. Um, but then they played a seed. They lose to a Wisconsin team where you kind of got the sense throughout the game that Vanderbilt may have been the more talented team. Uh, they, they were starting to play to the kind of what, what were our expectations were at the start of the season where they're ranked number seven, right. and it's just a game where it feels like it kind of got away from them. It feels like it got away from them, but you also, like you said, you feel like the Commodores were the better team in the game uh, and got, got the shot they wanted at the end of the game down to John Jenkins had a, not an open three, but a three that he hits uh, and, and unfortunately missed it, and uh, uh, Festus Azili uh, moved out of the way on the rebound. We'll get to that in a second when we talk about the referees, but... Uh, a game that Vanderbilt certainly could have won, uh, had a lot of trouble in the first half. They got back to a uh, three-point halftime deficit, had a stretch in the second half, four straight turnovers that killed them, uh, and Wisconsin just hit shots late in the shot clock like we knew that they could. Uh, certainly nothing Vanderbilt did to, to lose the game, I think, other than that stretch of turnovers, but a uh, very well-played game between two teams that I think we have to agree are top 15 in the country. Mm -hmm, for sure. Uh, neither of these teams got any breaks with the scheduling this year. Uh, Wisconsin obviously played a very tough Big Ten schedule. Uh, Vanderbilt saw Kentucky multiple times. Got a tough Harvard team. Uh, you spoke in past weeks about how Harvard wasn't necessarily a team that was designed to beat Vanderbilt. They were still a tough team. They had a big win against Florida State earlier in the year. And they were seen as a team that, as a mid-major, could make the kind of run that we've seen teams like Richmond make in the past. Yep. At the end of the day, Vanderbilt played well enough. John Jenkins had 27 points, yeah. uh, got some real good production out of Tinsley and, uh, and Jeff Taylor, and they did move on to face Wisconsin. But Wisconsin stylistically was just a team where it didn't seem like a good matchup with slowing it down with the Vanderbilt team that's made mistakes in a lot of games this year. Right, uh, absolutely. Now, something that certainly did not help Vanderbilt in the game, uh, some, uh, let's call them questionable calls, uh, <laughs> A lot of offensive fouls called against Vanderbilt in the game. Uh, a number of, uh, we'll, we'll call them borderline charges, uh, that uh, certainly uh, feels like uh, in past games would have been called as blocks against Wisconsin, uh, win as charges against the Commodores. And then, of course, that play at the end, our Festus Azili gets uh, armbarred by one Wisconsin player and then shoved out of the way on the other. Uh, so a lot of... A lot of calls that didn't seem to go with the Vanderbilt uh, Commodores in this game uh, and, 
Uh, it certainly affected the outcome in a game that's as close as that one was. Well, say what you want about blocks and charges, because at the end of the day, it's a little bit of a subjective call. But on a play like that, at the end so, of the game... Some of, some of them uh, are not. <laughs> at the end of the game, when you, when you look at the tape, even live, just Fessizioli was in position to get the rebound, got hooked by one player and shoved from behind by the other. Grabbed by one and, and then, then pushed, by, pushed the by the other. It just, it, it is no excuse for it. It's an indefensible it's, no call. Uh, we talked earlier on the radio show about how I, I'm very much into let the guys play with less than 10 seconds left. That's inexcusable. This was not uh, one this of those was, cases. This was one where Festus was mauled. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something they would have called a pony on uh, in a college football game, too. Clipping, to it be was, exact. Yeah, it, it, it was bad. Uh, and this, uh, you brought this up earlier, is this uh, our Jeff Green moment of, the, of this turn? Jeff Green, of course, the Georgetown player who traveled in 2007, knocking the Commodores out in the Sweet 16 matchup uh, that year. It, it doesn't have the same sting to it, and I didn't even go to Vanderbilt at the time that happened. I remember showing up on campus, coming out of high school, and the first thing the tour guide said to us was, Jeff Green traveled. But it's just, with Jeff Green, it was a situation where it was a clear travel. You know, you can say what you want about letting the boys play. Like, you either travel or you don't. Yeah. He traveled and he hit the... That's to you, Billy Packer. <laughs> he traveled and he hit the game-winning shot. Vanderbilt got another shot this one. It wasn't the shot that they wanted because it got deflected on the inbounds pass and then Lance had the wherewithal to actually throw that shot up from about three quarters court, if not full court. Uh, it was a very, very bad call, but at the end of the day, I don't come away feeling like we got screwed. We did kind of get screwed. We got, we got, we got screwed. screwed, but it's not one of those ones where I go, man, like if only yeah. as much as I go, wow, I'm proud of the way our guys played. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a positive takeaway at the end of the year. Right. I, I think you have to, you really have to be proud of the way the team played, especially with all the uh, uh, pessimism coming out of West End, uh, especially going into the tournament. Uh, and they did overcome that to beat Harvard. I, I don't think we can uh, say enough about that. Uh, a team that has been knocked out of the first round of the tournament the last three times it's been in it uh, came through and outplayed Harvard the entire game, really, except for one stretch towards the end. Uh, and I, I think it says a lot about this team that despite that enormous amount of pressure being placed on them in that first round game, came through with a uh, what felt, quite frankly, like a comfort comfortable victory against Harvard, almost. Yeah, it, it really seemed like they kind of exercised the demons in that game. Yeah. Just at the end of the game, you didn't have Kevin Stallings crying into a towel like in the SEC Championship. I but wish we had. I, I think we were all kind of crying into a towel on the inside. It just it felt so good to be out of the first round. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then the thing is the team didn't even show up with a it's good to be here. Yeah. Uh, second round game, or, it, third round in, you know, quote unquote, but let's be honest, it's the second it's round. The second That's round. what we're going to call it on the show. It's what yeah. we call it on the radio show. They showed up against Wisconsin. They played a heck of a game. It ended up not being enough in this case. But just with it, taking their entire tournament performance and just looking at it under a microscope, you got to walk away pretty happy with it. I mean, right. maybe it wasn't up to the preseason expectations. They played the seed, yeah. they played hard, and they played smart. Yeah. just wasn't enough and, in the end. And then ultimately, I think, found one of the toughest second-round matchups of any team in this tournament, uh, particularly Definitely. after all the upsets uh, that happened in the, in the first round. Uh, but I, I guess the question now that we have to ask is, what, what is the legacy of this team uh, and these seniors and John Jenkins, who we, we're, we're almost certain at this point John's leaving for the NBA. What is the legacy here uh, for this team? Well, there are going to be two takeaways, obviously. And it's yeah. kind of fitting that this team would have a Jekyll and Hyde legacy, too. Yeah, true. Um, looking back, all people are going to really remember is the SC Championship. Woo! Sorry for yeah. everyone who's listening on headphones. Yeah, sorry about that. We, uh, we won an SEC championship. Yeah. Say what you want, but <laughs> second one in school history. Yeah, at the end of the and day, that, these guys came through. Yeah. They and won. They won a title. There's a trophy in the mantle. Yeah. True. There it and is. And that also goes to all you who want Kevin Stallings fired after this year. Uh, he just won the second conference championship in school history. I think he's safe for another year. Yeah, he uh, he really maybe that's why he was crying under the towel. He really <laughs> he really uh, I saved my job. Yeah, um, and those those crowds those cries were getting pretty loud towards the end of the year. Yeah. But he's, he's definitely played himself into another season. They won the SEC championship. People who are close to the program, people who watched it, people who are students here at the time are going to remember how disappointing things were. There are a lot of teams that won titles who have that kind of what if 
yeah. uh, mentality about their team. And I think Vanderbilt fans are going to have that what if. Yeah. What if, you know, they hadn't just had those games? What if they had a little bit more uh, fortitude down the stretch? What if they had a guy who would come through in the clutch a little more often? Yeah. But at the end of the day, they didn't. And I think that you got to have the positives that way, the negatives in this case. Absolutely. And I know, at least for me, uh, getting to cover this team for the last two years and watching them for the last uh, however many years it is at this point, uh, this is one of my favorite teams to watch uh, ever. The personalities on this team were so, so much fun. Uh, and the guys were, it was a team that you had to like uh, for all their faults. Uh, for all the Brad Tinsley moments, for all the mischief Taylor free throws, for all the long, long shots by John Jenkins that didn't go in, for all the fadeaway sky hooks by Festus, uh, for all the Lan- absurd, Lance, for everything Lance has ever done, <laughs> for the absurdly hard fouls that Steve committed but clearly didn't mean to, everything that happened, you just you kind of love this team, uh, and, and it. It's nice to see them go down swinging mm. uh, and not, not get blown out in their last game. Uh, it was a team that fought to the very end uh, and a team that, let's be honest, could have done more, but they didn't, and, and we take them as what they are. and Not what they could have been. Yeah, and, and I think that's really going to be important with this team. And like you said, we're going to look back and remember this team as the 2012 SEC champions. Mm-hmm. Um, but looking forward... I, this is a team that loses its entire starting five. Uh, there's, there's not much else to say there. This is a team that the core going forward has got to be Rod Odom, Dejon Parker, Keedron Johnson, Josh Henderson. Josh Henderson, Kyle Fuller. Shelby Motes. Shelby Motes. Uh, James, James Siakam. James Siakam. I, you know. I like, I like, he's a project, but he's, yeah. I, I like him. Yeah. Uh, what reasonably can we expect from this team uh, I know Reed Harris another writer for the hustler with us uh, says that they're sealing next year is to go eight and eight in the SEC well, I, I disagree but that, that's what he's laid out there uh, as their ceiling it's it's a tough projection uh, and the, the funny thing is is that in the past Kevin Stong's teams have exceeded expectations when they haven't had the type of four-star you know yeah. talent they've had on this roster They've had guys like Shane Foster come in unheralded relatively and just really, you know, blow other teams out of the water with what he can do. Uh, So really it's hard to say. I mean, there's definitely some talent, uh, some legitimate talent, not just kind of like playing above their heads talent on this team in guys like Dejon Parker and Keegan Johnson. And Josh Anderson, uh, their stories from last year about him, you know, really holding his own against Festus yeah. in practice. Uh, even though we didn't quite see it the first couple of games, but that he's certainly a guy that can be good moving forward. I think what we've seen with Kevin Stallings' team throughout his tenure here is he can take not talented teams and make them good. He can also take very talented teams and make them merely good. Yeah. But I don't think we can discount this team next year. And I think we saw, especially throughout the tournament, Dejon and Kedron can play, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got big minutes in important games and came through. Uh, so while this might not be a team that's going to get a fifth seed in the tournament next year, I think it's going to be a fun team to watch. A 10 and seed's a seed. Yeah. And we've seen it. Uh, you can be a 10th seed, a 13th seed, and get to the Final Four. Uh, well, 11 seed. Let's uh, not go crazy yeah, let's here. Not, let's not, uh, you know. <laughs> Do too much here, but do I, less. this is. T- yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Killing me, Smalls. But anyway, uh, yes, Kedron uh, played big minutes. Dejan played big minutes, and they've both shown that they can handle the pressure of these big games. Kevin Stalling showed a lot more faith in them going down the stretch, and I think that's going to pay dividends next year because of these, these are the guys that, as you said, are going to be the core of this upcoming team. They're going to be the leaders for this team. Uh, we don't honestly. We don't, as fans, know all that much about Rod and where he stands in the hierarchy of the team and what his mentality has been on the roster, but he can play. We've I seen that he can play. I can't wait to let Rod do his own thing be rather than be a cog in the offense to get the ball to other people because mm-hmm. he came in as a guy who has tremendous scoring ability, uh, and I don't think we've seen that unleashed yet, and I don't think we've seen Dejan or Kedron unleashed on the offensive end yet. And we saw what Kedron could do in that SEC championship game. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I, I'm still of the opinion that he basically won it for us with that stretch. But 
it's going to be tough. And it's a team that's clearly not going to have the same amount of talent it does this year. Uh, and bringing in a recruiting class that, compared to the last few, is frankly disappointing. There's two three-star players and a two-star guy coming in. Uh, but it's a team that I, I don't think you can discount moving forward. And, yeah, maybe it's a team that's going to go to the NIT next year. What about the year after that? Uh, it's mm -hmm. a team that can grow. It's a team that can develop. And it's a team that's going to be fun to watch. Another team that's fun to watch <laughs> here in Nashville, the football team, opened up spring practice last Friday. Uh, we got a, a couple of quick hits, news and notes here. Uh, offensive guard Mylon Brown dismissed from the team due to unspecified team rules violations. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, unfortunate, Mylon started uh, five or six games for the Commodores this year. Another loss to that offensive line that's already seen Logan Stewart dismissed. Uh, but uh, some other, other things going on. Uh, the quarterbacks getting shuffled around. Chris Cantera uh, getting moved to tight end slash H-back. Uh, sort of a hybrid tight end, fullback, halfback position. Josh Grady moved to the slot receiver, though he will still be the third string quarterback. Uh, LaFonte Thurgood already been moved to halfback. So now we have Two, two sole quarterbacks right now in Jordan Rogers and Austin Carter Samuels. Patton Robinette, the freshman, also in there, though it looks like he's going to get red-shirted. But it's going to be a battle between Carter Samuels and Rogers for the quarterback spot. Reed Harris, who's our guy who's been at spring practice all the time, uh, kind of has a man crush on Carter Samuels, but he thinks uh, that Austin's going to win the starting job. What do you think? I don't know. I mean, at the end of the year, we saw a lot of positives out of uh, Jordan, and he's clearly shown he has the poise to lead this team. That having been said, Austin Carter Samuels was a very talented transfer. It was a big coup that Vanderbilt was able to get him. Uh, Mountain West Freshman of the Year. Comes in with a lot of poise. Uh, I've actually seen he's been tweeting a lot about how he's ready to, to grab yeah. this job. So clearly it's going to be a battle for it. It's not going to be a situation where the incumbent yeah. just comes in and takes it. Right. And that's it, just what you want to see. You can't expect yeah. anything, anything less. Absolutely. And, and to borrow a phrase from a Peyton Man commercial, uh, Car Samuels is the kind of guy you're going to like if you happen to like six foot three, 220 220-pound quarterbacks with laser rocket arms. And the kid has some zip on his throws that, uh, quite frankly, you don't see at Jordan Rodgers. Uh, mm -hmm. And he can throw the deep ball. He can throw the deep outs. He makes all the throws you look for in an NFL quarterback. So it's going to be interesting to see what James Franklin does with this quarterback battle that we have brewing here. Uh, of course, first game, home game Thursday night, opening up the college football season against South Carolina. Could not be more excited for it. Could not be. But let's move on to uh, around the bubble. A lot of news and goings on <laughs> this weekend. Uh, Vanderbilt Diamond Doors. See what I did there? Uh, David Bowie song, don't worry. Uh, they got swept by the number one Florida Gators this weekend, uh, dropping their record to 7-13. and 13. Currently playing against Evansville right now uh, over at Hawkins Field, losing 4 to nothing in the bottom of the fifth inning, unfortunately. Your women's lacrosse team, number eight in the country, lost to Penn State in overtime this past week. Going to travel to Evanston, Illinois to play the number one Northwestern Wildcats this weekend, too. Conference so, game. That will be a big one. Tough stretch for them. Mm -hmm. uh, your women's basketball team, uh, the number seven seed, taking on two seed Duke tonight at 8.30 in Memorial Gym. If the Commodores win, they will be the one team moving on to the Sweet 16. Uh, going to Fresno. Yeah, going to the Fresno Regional. Uh, so it's going to be... Interesting matchup. Duke, obviously, a, seven, a two seed. Very, very good. It's going to be an uphill battle for Jasmine Lister, Christina Foggy, and the rest of the rest of the team. But not out of the question, certainly. Uh, so tune into that. I know there are still free tickets available for students for that game, so check that out. Check your emails from Andrea Wall, uh, Weekend at Vanderbilt. I think she's got all your news there. Uh, but I guess, I guess that's going to do it for us. So... For Peter Nygaard, I'm Jackson Martin. Thanks for watching.